Hello, fellow detectives. Welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew by Her Interactive. I'm your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome actor Marshall Bell to the show. Welcome. Hi there. It's great to have you because we were just talking off air that it's been 10 years since the Nancy Drew film from 2007 with Emma Roberts. And of course, you were in this as John Leshing, and I I, I still can't believe it's been 10 years. <laughs> Hard for me to believe, too. I, uh, uh, it seems like I mean, I was out uh, for, unfortunately, I went out to the Bill Paxton Memorial the other day, on, on, and that was the gate I would drive through every day, and it brought up all that. And uh, so it seems like uh, it seemed like yesterday, but uh, there we are. Well, Jerry Weintraub was the producer, an unlikely producer of it, and he, you know, was a quite an operator in Hollywood, and he could get... He could get just about anybody to do anything if he wanted to. He was well liked and respected. And went all the way back to Sinatra, and uh, you know, Ocean's Twelve and all those things were his. Was that audition process audition, in front of hired, him, or they just hired me? I didn't audition. The director Andy Fleming uh, knew my work and uh, wanted to use me, and uh, Mr. Weintraub uh, didn't. Uh, object to that so i was hired no i don't I, you know i had by that time made an awful lot of movies so they had plenty of things to look at i guess and what what were some of your first films in the entertainment industry you know what drew you to go out to hollywood and really pursue uh, your uh, career well, uh, that's a good story because what happened was my wife is a well-known costume designer and she's got now four oscars and stuff like that and she was working on a f- film called The Cotton Club, and uh, uh, she had worked on a movie directed by uh, Alan uh, Parker called Midnight Express. And he was at dinner one night and uh, putting together a movie, and he told somebody there that he wanted to use a character that was like me, and because he knew me. And then the guy who was a casting director said, "Well, why don't you just use Marshall?" And so he said, but Marshall's not an actor. And Fred said, well, try him anyway. So they, I ended up being in a movie called Birdie, which was made for uh, Columbia, well, what's now Columbia, uh, that Alan Parker directed, which was an A movie. And so, and I had to do something tricky in the little scene that I was in. So then I started getting seen by other people and I started working. So I got discovered, really. You know, we shot a take, and he printed the first take, and that was very encouraging, and that releases a lot of tension. So so then, and he also was, he knew that I was an amateur, really, and he gave me a lot of specific directions, which made life a lot easier. And then all of a sudden, you started loving it after, toward the, you know, that was the deal. I, you, you know, I, I fell in love with it. What was it like to kind of walk around the set and try to get into character of the the character of Leshing? First of all, uh, I trusted everybody on the you know uh, Jerry Weintraub. It's a really a professional organization, so you trust everybody that's there because it's like a lot of pros. And then it turns out uh, Emma Roberts was a wonderfully charming, energetic young actress to work with so and my scenes were a lot of them with her and so that made life a lot more pleasant because we got along really well and you know I met her parents and I got along with them and I mean it was just a there were some hard things to do technically as an actor very but um, uh, that's fun too that's a challenge and it's fun I try to do it a day at a time. I try to not worry about uh, the end uh, of of something like that so that I kind of don't think about what's going on Um, at the end. I think about um, how 
who is this guy today? The thing I was pleased with was that in the end, it, it you know, Leshing genuinely liked her. And I think that I was able to make that come through, you know, uh, insofar as Leshing was able to like anybody, you know. You're working with Rachel Lee Cook, uh, Tate Donovan, Emma Roberts, you know. I'm a fan of everybody. Uh, I'm a fan of Tate. And it was really very, you know, all these people were very easy to be around and to work with. And, and you know, that's a that's a great bonus because that not, that's not necessarily uh, going to be the case, although I've been very lucky in my career that that has been the case. Uh, Rachel, uh, you know, I worked with in a kind of intense way in another movie right after that <laughs> where she was kind of my boss. And uh, so I uh, I got to be very good friends with her and. Uh, Emma, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan. I actually know her father and all that. Uh, I'm, I was a fan right away. She was just a very uh, wonderful to watch work and to work with. And, and the other people, like Barry, everybody in the cast was just fantastic to work with. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I loved actually the whole experience of doing the movie for everybody. I love the director. I worked for him again. You know, everybody on the set, were the, the crew was it was just a wonderful experience at every level to do the film. If you ever got the chance to work with Nancy for a mystery, where specifically would you like to go and visit and solve a mystery? Berlin, at? Germany. It's just, it's just an amazingly rich, it's just a fantastic city uh, to be able to do anything in, you know, and so uh, that's easy to answer. The thing that just, I keep smiling when I think about this was just how charming um, Emma was to work with because, you know, she was 15, so they have restrictions on them. You know, they have to go to school and all that stuff. And she had her little bike and everything. And of course she grew up out here in the business and was very, it was very adamant about maintaining her little girlness instead of just being some so-called savvy Hollywood kid. She wasn't like that. It was really charming to be to work with her. It really was. Now, what do you think? You know, it's been ten years since the film, but let's say we got to check in with Leshing and his family, his new family. What do you think that they would be up to now? Oh, uh, I think Leshing uh, came out of himself and became. Uh, I'm getting emotional. I'd say he became a very happy old man. Very satisfied with the whole situation, really glad that that all came about. Uh, it changed him into a much more friendly huggy bear than he was before. And he just, you know, I'd say it was very happy deal for him because Rachel is so good at that person that, and I know, and I did end up with Rachel again, and I just know Leshing would have would have loved his daughter, you know. And Leshing's little granddaughter, she was so cute. How old was she? Like three or four? Uh, God, I remember that. She was very good. I, you know, I'm just thinking about that now. I was downtown. She was excellent too. Uh, I don't know exactly how old she was. Very young. In terms of film, you can't bank on the kid that age delivering for the scene to work like that. And of course I now remember it was very, we were all, it's just great when it happens. Great. There are a lot of people out there who would love to find and work their way into the entertainment industry. So would you have any advice for people who are aspiring actors and actresses? That's what I say to everybody. Don't do it. But if you want to do it, you're not going to listen to me. So once you do do it, and you're out here and you do whatever you're doing, waiting tables and then going to class and everything, and you start to work and you want me to answer your calls and tell you what you should, you know, give you any kind of, I don't know, advice is a, certainly a word I don't like very much out here. But, you know, if you want somebody to talk to about it while you're here, I'll answer your calls and I'll tell you. Because you're because people who are driven to do this aren't going to listen 
to people who tell them not to do it, but it's a, it's a potential heartbreak, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. because you just got to love rejection. You know, I remember I was at a, I went to the university of Colorado and they had me telling, uh, a class, you know, of act, there was an acting class and they said, uh, what would be the number one thing you would say? And I said, don't party. And they're all they very sad. I said, party after you get the part. Don't party until you do, because uh, that's the wrong time to do it. You can't afford it. Well, uh, it's a great gift to be able to be kind and, and not be too suspicious of everybody. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, th that's a gift, though. I mean, a lot of people naturally are. And this is a business that's got full of kind of suspicious and, you know, who, who did this to me to get the role, whatever. Uh, and you just have to keep on not participating in any of that. Uh, this is already, you know, this town's a setup for bad things to happen because, because only a very few people get to have success here. So, you know, you just have to maintain, as you say, be kind. It's great advice though. It does help in the long run. So, but it, if you could describe your experience being a part of the Nancy Drew universe, using one word, what would that be? Complicated. <laughs> but in a good way, right? Yeah. De definitely a unique project. And I'm so glad that, you know, it, it, it has a following online. I love seeing, you know, little Facebook or Twitter posts, you know, people quote it a lot. And I know the listeners to our podcast have seen it for sure. So uh, I cannot thank you enough for being on the show. And here's to another 10 years of Nancy Drew. I hope we get maybe another sequel or something like that. And I hope they ask you back for it. It would be cool to see Leshing and uh, it would be cool to see Leshing helping out Nancy with her next, her next, you know, sleuthing mystery. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling. That was, this was, uh, this was fun. 